Since you mentioned the draft, Charlie, I want to get into that just a bit before we wrap up. Okay. You know, the offseason schedule, some things are coming up. Uh, maybe we can get into this in the next couple of days. But I want to focus on the draft right now. Um, just likely scenarios. Like right now at 12, you know, we've talked about Berkeley Catton. We've talked about Carter Yakimchuk, Consta Hellenius. Who do you think we should be like really focused in on if they are just picking at 12? Say well, it's the 12th pick, Flyers are on the board. I know it's so it's so hard because we have no idea how picks like, you know, six to eleven are going to turn out. But just based on what we think the Flyers value, well, who Will, do you think they're well, targeting? Well, William, is? Okay. actually, something <laughs> well, very actually. interesting dropped today. A <laughs> very is important, a very important aspect of the draft lead up. It was indeed Uncle Bob Uncle McKenzie's ah, draft wow. ranking list. Yeah. And to give you some background on the Bob McKenzie draft list. When you read a Corey Promman ranking list or a, a Scott Wheeler or a Chris Peters, if you read or a Craig Button, you're reading their evaluation, their personal rankings of the players. So like Corey Promman has Carter Yakumchuk as his third best prospect. That does not mean he thinks that Carter Yakumchuk is going to go third or third overall. It means that if he was a GM and he had the third overall pick, he would take Carter Yakumchuk there. That's an important distinction from the Bob McKenzie list, the final list that comes out the week of the draft, because that list is not Bob McKenzie's view of these prospects. Bob McKenzie probably has spent very little, if any time at all, watching he's these prospects those marks, play. Baby. He, he's drinking those marks. Yeah. He's semi-retired at this point. Exactly. What that list is, is a solicitation of a bunch of scouts and team executives that he knows, and then he compiles all of their rankings together and puts together a list of what essentially is, in the moment, the week of the draft, industry consensus on where these guys rank. So McKenzie's list in general, almost every year, it performs the best in terms of predicting where guys will be drafted. Maybe not the exact spot, because the list it's not a mock draft. It's not saying, mm -hmm. well, if this team's at 11 and this guy's ranked 11, that's who they're going to take. But it is giving you an idea of how NHL teams in aggregate view the rankings of these players. Yes. So that list came out this morning, and at number 12 is Berkeley Catton. I like it. At number 13 Ooh. is Carter Yakimchuk. Oh, interesting. So these are two guys we've been talking about for quite a while that if we're talking about the Bob McKenzie list, one or both very plausibly could be there at 12. Charlie V. Bill. Here we go. Catton versus Yakumchuk. We're going to have to settle this somehow. We Should we have some sort of bet on this? I, I would put a bet on it. Uh, what, what should we? Be careful because I own a Tony D'Angelo jersey because of making a bet with Charlie. Oh. So watch out. <laughs> I that was buy a good it investment. with my own money. Uh, well, uh, maybe we'll we'll open it up to the comments if anyone has any good ideas. Yes. Uh, put it up here, what me and Charlie can put. Yakim Chuck yeah. v. Catton. Uh, and if it's no one, uh, Kelly wins. But some of the other players that we've talked about, because we yeah. talked about a lot of them, uh, Constellanius is up at nine, which oh, is interesting. Yeah. It's higher than I maybe thought. Um, I thought Yakim Chuck might be in the top ten and Hellenius might be down around the teens. Hellenius being up at nine makes me wonder if he could go maybe to the Devils or the Sabres at 10 or 11. Uh, you have uh, TJ Ginla, also a little lower than I thought. He's at 10. Hmm. I, look, I wouldn't say that TJ Ginla is like the guy I'm rooting for, but it would be so fun if TJ Ginla was a Philadelphia Yeah, I would like be that, so into that. And I think he's going to be a really good player. That would be a lot of fun. That'd be a super fun pick. Then you got Beckett Seneca at 11. My read is that I think he's going to go a little higher than that because I get the sense that Seneca, Seneca and Yakim Chuck are interesting because I think both those guys are guys where the aggregate list might be underrating them a bit because they are guys where either the team really likes them or they really don't. Like mm. there are teams I think that have Seneca as high as like four or five, and there are teams that have Seneca at like 16, 17. And I think the mm. same thing is the case for Yakim Chuck, which means that. If a team picking at six or seven or eight happens to really like them, Yakumchuk could Yakumchuk could go a lot earlier than thirteen because there's a wide range of opinions on how good he is. Whereas someone like Sam Dickinson is at six because everybody likes him. All right, that was my next uh, question. In the event that they move up, because that's fun to think about. It and is. Danny said we are open to that. He also said we're open to all scenarios. And also there was the, the Travis down, Yost like, report yeah. about strongly hinting that there is a, a trade up at least 
partially agreed to in principle. He's a pretty good insider. He did break the Jacob Markstrom trade yeah. earlier that day. So something to uh, to keep in mind, to be sure. Now, people have asked me like that, you know, because this is people are paying attention to the Flyers again. They want to know. Like, they sure okay, are. So I love if, it. Say they move up to seven. Like, who would the target be? I have been saying Zeev Booyam. And Sam Dickinson. And I think Sam Dickinson, look at the size, the London connection. Like, I think that would Sam be the Dickinson guy they're moving sense. up for yeah. if he's available and they do decide to move up. Is Do you think that's way off base? Do, like, would he be a target for this team, do you think? Dickinson is a guy who I've always thought made a lot of sense for the Flyers as a move up. Um, I personally really, really like Zeev Booyam. I yes. don't know if the Flyers do. I think he's great. He's my top defenseman in the draft, so I would run up to trade up for him to be sure. But Dickinson, because of the size factor, the Flyers obviously want to add size to their blue line, and given the fact they already have York and Drysdale and potentially Andre coming, that's a blue line that's not that big. They might want to get a bigger guy. Booyam's like six foot. Dickinson is like six, six two, three. six three. Yeah. So Dickinson fits there. There's the London connection, as you said. Dickinson makes sense to me. I've... I've heard some rumblings that they like they might really like Hatton. Like oh, so okay. I so I mean they don't want to wait. They could it could be a do we want do we want to risk it kind of thing? It, yeah. I I had heard things a couple months ago that Yakum Chuck was someone they liked. So there are options here. All I right. love having options. And then we have to get to this. Bryn just showed me this. Um, the Flyers. You know, they put out that little statement we showed earlier, but they just now oh, tweeted yeah. this. Yes. Hell yeah. It's it's I mean, you got you got to play to the crowd. Oh yeah. my god, that's, that's a beautiful sight, man. It it's sure just is. so. Uh, it's just nice to have something to be happy about. It's been so goddamn long. Imagine I've not been mad being at this team for this. so long. Like I'm tired of being mad at them. So I good. love the Flyers. I want to be happy with them, and I am. Imagine yes. being a top prospect that wants to side in Philadelphia. Mm. Must mean you're special and not a little, you know, small man. Um, that said, I, was I will. Else, uh, but I, so, so, I will absolutely take anyone who doesn't maybe want to sign with their current team. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe they're yeah, thinking well, about moving like them. His, I'll take Cutter's best friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. going back Bring a second though, because I do see some some chatter in the comment section about some other players. Mm -hmm. The one thing I will say that I have been hearing, and again, this this could all change. You never know. But I've been hearing this for a week or so, and I've been reading this from people who I trust as well. It does seem like the top five is starting to come into focus. Maybe not necessarily where, but definitely the players. These I think I mentioned this yesterday. Are, and and yeah. McKenzie, McKenzie basically said as much in his ranking. Celebrini is obviously going one, but then you've got Demidoff, Levshinov, Salayev, and Lidstrom. It looks like in some order that's going to be the top five and that the draft, I, this is kind of a cliche, but it seems like the draft is really going to start at six. Mm. Because I don't think anyone really knows what Utah is going to do. Yeah. And there's a lot of different directions they could go. But it seems like we're getting to a consensus that your top five in some order is going to be Celebrini, Dimitrov, Levshinov, Lidstrom, Salayev. So if if you have dreams on one of those guys, you might want to pick a different favorite. I gave up on <laughs> the just say that way. I gave up on the Salayev dream a long time ago. Yeah, I don't it's... think like I've said that top ten picks rarely get traded. They do sometimes. It's rare, but it happens. Top five picks Top five. never Ew. get traded. None of those guys in my mind are trading their no. picks. None of those guys are falling to the Flyers. So I, if one of those five is your guy, just pick another one. I would say, though, Utah <laughs> at six, that's another trade target, I think. I mean, I don't know if we have what they're looking for, but uh, it's... They, they need... They need to sell some tickets, good. I bet. They got to sell tickets. Uh, they got to well, sell some jerseys. Tickets, but yeah, that guy needs the money, man, you know? He <laughs> only owns two sports franchises. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor.